I heard of an experiment where they, uh, it was like a mid 2000s or 2010s, uh, it's like a social media post where they drew a picture of a, like a 747 aircraft on a conveyor belt. And they said if the conveyor belt moves at the speed that the jet would have to be at to take off, and the jet turned its engines on in order to not go backwards, could the airplane fly? And the internet was all up in arms saying that the airplane would fly because it was going fast enough. And uh, the other half of the internet said it can't fly because it has no airspeed. Happening the hood. Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. This is a 2005 Nissan Frontier 4 liter V6. Customer states, replace catalytic converters. And, uh, and I have some in the box right here. They came with the truck. Uh, that came with it also. I think those might be the rears. But uh, it appears that they would like all four converters replaced. Uh, I do not know why. I did not diagnose this. Now, normally I would never do such things. However, this is another shop, so I'm not gonna not gonna worry about the finer details. Looks like they have 131,583 miles on the clock. That is starting the engine. All right. Okay, looks like the service engine soon indicator is illuminated. Okay, let us not waste any time. Time is of the essence, as always. Let's get this thing in the shop. Uh, ooh, a little bit of a misfire thing going on there. Running rough. I hope that's not why they want the converters replaced, because that would be uh, an exercise in futility. Let's just, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna make sure that we're on the right track here. Hang on a second. I don't know if we need converters or not. Bust out the scan tool, see what the codes at least tell us, and then we can make a judgment call from there. What do you guys say? I think that'll work. So uh, the outside air temperature during this polar vortex that we're all experiencing, uh, even in Florida, uh, had our temperatures down to a frigid 37 degrees this morning. I believe it was in the 30s, like the low 30s overnight. And my alternator did that not wanting to charge thing. It's, it's probably a faulty year old unit quality, 2020's quality, you know? What do we got here, Nissan, is that what I said? Sure, Nissan, loading data, come on man. Auto ID, yeah. Waiting and waiting, come on, automatic ID. Let's get you loaded. It's not gonna do it, I need to do this uh, manually. Cancel, come on. I recall this thing having been faster when I bought it, what is this? Uh, oh, it already, it ID'd the car, okay. Uh, let's go into engine. Give me some trouble codes, please. Codes only. Yeah, maybe one of these converters is clogged up, and that's why we have a misfire. Maybe fuel trims are all weeby wobbly everywhere. Maybe it's got dead O2 sensors. Who knows? Oh, cylinder two misfire. Catalyst efficiency low. Bank one and bank two. Well, I see why they wanted to put uh, converters in it. Data. Let's just see what fuel trims are saying. If fuel trims aren't like flip flop 180 per bank or something like that or doing anything kind of crazy, I'll go ahead and throw these converters in. Engine data one, sure. All right, looks like both the upstream uh, O2s, they're switching voltage. See right here, right here. They're moving around, they're doing what they should be. I'm assuming that those are in good shape. Yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, do what our customer wants. We'll get this thing up in the air and then pull those converters off. Let's do that. That's what we're here for. I'm not here to diagnose. That's already been done. Let's just move this forward a little bit more. Right about, yeah, that looks good. Parking is the auto, powering down. So check this out right here. This battery has been sitting on this charger uh, like over, over the holiday weekend. And I put it on here and it had the red flash indicating it was a failed battery unit. And I just left it there. This morning, I come in and I power up the power strip and it started taking a charge. Check that out. So, I, I don't know. I don't know why it just all of a sudden decided it was gonna work again, but I'm taking this opportunity to get my all my old batteries on the chargers. Maybe they're super cold and they feel like working today. Uh, 
maybe there's a glitch in the battery shutting down programming that's in the PCBs in these things that's allowing them to charge because of the cold, who knows? But my batteries are coming up, so I'm gonna get them all charged. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I've noticed on more than one occasion where if you let, uh, let one of these batteries run down a little too low, it will not accept a charge when you put it back on the charger. Uh, my Milwaukee's are doing that, and uh, the Snap-on batteries are doing that. I have not experienced that with my rigid batteries, which I find odd because everybody bashes me for running rigid tools like they're garbage and, and they're kind of not. And the thing about the rigid tools is if one of them craps out, they're so inexpensive, I just replace the thing and, and uh, call it a day. You know, I'm, I think I'm a little way too far forward. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this truck back about a foot. Okay, that's all said again. Moving on up. Green subscribe button. Caption. All right. Let's give it the check to see if it's going to fall off shake. That's a negative. Good to go. Okay. Popping in the hood real quick. Let's just take a gander under the bonnet. See what we got here. Oh. Yep, four liter V6. Kind of, yeah, it's been tinkered on a time or two. Okay. Mm. Let's see here. Ha! Oh, that's a new one. The uh, the hood prop rod is, is broken off. Stick that in there. Just want to see how hard these converters are going to be to remove. It, like the O2s are in the way, three bolt flanges, zip tie mod, oh, AC leak, that speaks for itself. Oh, the heater core appears to have developed a leak at some point. It has been bypassed. Okay. Interesting. Um, nah, 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 nah. all right, that's that's all we got so far. Yep, okay, let's lift this thing up and get this thing apart. I think that's the best course of action. We're wasting time. This is a non diag job, and I'm diagging it anyway. Moving on up, almost all the way up. That'll do. Let's go see what her nether regions are going to uh bestow upon us. What do we got here? What do we have? We have a leaky oil filter or they just changed it and didn't give it any spray. Hmm, sealant. Hey, it's got a newish engine, look at that. Those look like Jasper colors, okay. Hmm, hmm. All right, so there's one converter there. Those are our upstream converters. And then we've got, looks like these other converters right here. Bolts, 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 everything's bolted on. This is good. No clamps, okay. All right, let's 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 hit these uh, fasteners with a little bit of spray and then we'll go ahead and start pulling this thing apart. Let's see what we got. Some BG Inforce, this is good stuff. I like it. Good for uh, removing corroded fasteners. Watch pop, fun don't stop. And not sponsored, that's just what I'm using because that's what I bought. It's foamy, so you know it's good. Let's see, the next one. It foams, so you know it's doing something, right? There we go. Get the ones up top too. All right, that should be good. Okie dokes, I've gone through and performed the unboxing procedure. We can see here we've got four converting units. Two of them bolt together. Nice looking honeycomb inside. They gave us hardware and gaskets for both units. Hardware and gaskets. This is good. Okay, let's, uh, let's worry about getting those O2 sensors removed from the old units. Then we'll unbolt them 
drop them out of there and uh, see how this works out. Okie doke, so my icrometer has indicated to me that these are 17 millimeter size sockets. Nuts. So let's try a 17 size socket. Let's see if I can't get them to come off of there. Loud noises. Oh, that's easy. Nice. Must have been the penetrating lube. Definitely was due to the lube. Now that one. Ah, flung crap in my face. Ugh. Somehow it went past my glasses and got in my eye. What is this? Blink, rapid blink. Hi. Right. Time to wash the eye out. Be right back. Stay here. All right, I'm back. I got the the shards of corroded steel out of my eyeball. That was fun. Yeah, it went right past my glasses. Landed right in my eye. That, that hurt. It, I mean, it didn't hurt. It was just really irritating. Anyway, that one's off. Let's uh, switch directions here and uh, get this other unit. There we go. Same ammo. We'll pull the nuts off. Washer gravity. Okay. Now let's just move on forward and take this apart, probably in sections, I think. Actually, we're gonna get that O2 sensor first. We're gonna get all those out. I don't wanna forget them and break them. Now it's a little hard to get a wrench onto that because there's this, uh, this big old cross member right here. But I think, I think I can manage. Yep. Unclick. Perfect. There we go. Okay, we'll just uh, set that guy aside. We're not changing the sensors, we're just changing out the, uh, the converters. You know, while I'm here, we'll grab this other side right over yonder too. Right there, yep. Now, I don't think I lubricated that sensor. Let's see if it's gonna have any difference here. Unclicks. Yeah, that one came out too. That's good. Hmm, that lube may have been effective. Let's give it a spurt. Yeah, those threads felt kind of, kind of rough and non-compliant. Uh huh. Probably, uh, is that my kids screaming? Probably. They're in the office. No school today. So it's come to work with dad day. Come off of there, please. Thank you. His threads are kind of crusty. I probably build up on the inside section of them. Yeah. All right. No worries. Okay, two sensors, two flanges removed. Let's move forward and uh, get the next flange. Okay, so these fasteners are, looks like they're 14s. It also looks like this job gets, ow! That hurt, my battery fell out. Yeah, look, it fell out of the tool and hit me in the knee. That, that actually did kind of hurt. Uh, it appears that the tabs are broken off. Okay. This is not one of the Milwaukee's, this is the aftermarket replacement. Anyway, as, as I was saying, it appears this is getting harder as we move forward because space is becoming less and less and less. My knee hurts. I'm gonna just put a new battery in. All right, continuing on. This is kind of warm. It's actually really warm. Hot. Okay. There's one unit. Let's get the other one out. One down, three to go. It felt like this extension was kind of killing the power of this thing. Yeah, that sounds and felt like extension. Yeah, usually it's better than that. Okay. All right, that's 
two units disconnected and removed. Well, looky here, I found out why those uh, converter codes were going off because there is no converter. Somebody has uh, emptied these units out. Look at that. There's, uh, there's nothing in there. That's why it uh, is throwing an efficiency code. And this one, it's got something in there, but it appears to be broken. Is that, yeah, that's a piece of whatever that core was inside. Yep, again, they've been emptied out. Okay, mystery solved. Okie doke, so the flange on the front of this converter, it's got two bolts coming in from that side and then one going in from this side, which is uh, that top one we can barely see there. So I think I'm gonna get the uh, this side bolt first and then we'll switch to the uh, other side bolt. I may have to do just uh, do these manually. So I've got an extension with a wobbly and uh, I'm a big ratchet here. Oh, that extension's torquing. There we go. Hmm. Come on. There it is. That was violent. And I think I... I hope I didn't snap that stud off or I'm in trouble. No, no, we're good, we're good. It's unthreading. I'm not interested in snapping off studs in the manifolds today. It's cold. And I didn't have, uh, or I didn't fill my torches with gas yet, so I'll be SOL if I need fire. All right, let's move around to the front side of this and uh, get those two remaining bolts out of there. So this one will be easy. That one right there, not so much. There's really not much space to, to work with in there. I think I can get a wrench into it and I may have the swing right here to, to break it loose. What I'll do is I'll use a, a straight wrench first. Is it gonna fit on there? Got the right size? Yeah, that's 14. And that one's a different size. Okay, now I see. It's 15. Being a 15, that tells me someone's removed that before. Maybe I can Let's see how I'm gonna do this. Hang on, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. All right, that turn. Sweet. Okay. Oh, good. That whole stud's turning. That's it's all right by me. All right, some ratcheting wrenches will make light work of this. Get our angly dangles right here. There we go. A little bit of ratchet action and uh, we'll get that pain in the butt fastener out. And then we'll just uh, zip this one off with a power tool and we're good to go. Sound good. It does to me, uh, the other side, there's a motor mount in the way on the other side. We're, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I don't want to think about that other side yet. Where's my lubricant? I'm short on, uh, on the lube. There we go. Couldn't hurt. Actually, it could. It could drip on my leg. There's nothing worse than lubricated pants on a cold day. I should make that a bumper sticker. <laughs> lubricated pants on a cold day. <sighs> Maybe that's why people have been calling me mentally ill in my comment section. I say things like that, and I think it's funny. Meanwhile, others think I need therapy. Meh, don't we all? This is 2022, we all need therapy. I remember in the early 2000s, there was this phenomenon of uh, like people with, ch with kids, you know, seven, six, seven, eight years old, and they were carting them around town in, in their baby strollers, like children that are 
well capable of walking. That didn't come out right, you know what I meant. They're extremely capable of walking, and yet they were protected in their baby basket until like third or fourth grade. There's one. Then we introduced Twitter after that, and I think that just finished off society. I heard of an experiment where they, uh, it was like a mid 2000s or 2010s, uh, it's like a social media post where they drew a picture of a like a 747 aircraft on a conveyor belt and they said if the conveyor belt moves at the speed that the jet would have to be at to take off and the jet turned its engines on in order to not go backwards could the airplane fly and the internet was all up in arms saying that the airplane would fly because it was going fast enough and uh the other half of the internet said it can't fly because it has no airspeed. And I believe that debate has uh, remained uh, unsolved to this day. I mean, I know the answer. I know it's. I know you need airspeed to fly. But the point was to illustrate just uh, how quickly we degenerate when giving a, a platform to argue on. Which is probably why half the planet thinks the Earth is flat now and that we all live inside of a dome. Come on, you stupid bolt. Um, I'm running out of patience with this thing. Patience eliminated. Rusted fastener eliminated. Got it. All right, reaching up there for that O2 connector. Let's get that thing undone. Because I did not uh, remove the uh, upstream O2 from this converter. Weird goofy angles. So what I'll do is I'll just transfer this to the new one before I put it in. There we go. All right, that's one side done and the other side halfway done. Let's get uh, this front unit out right here and we should be uh, ready to rock. I'm putting the new ones back in. Okay, let's see. Let's see about this one right here. That one I think I can get uh, through the fender well and then the top one I can get from the back side. So let's uh, let's crack this guy loose. Do you hear me? Well, there's one crack. Hmm. There. Come on, don't you slip. I felt that. It's not acceptable. I believe that was a turn, right? Yeah, yeah, we're turning. Easy peasy, look at that. Oh, it's just gonna spin right off. Love Florida, even our rust is not really rust. More. Not gravity. Okay, let's get out of here and go over to the wheel well and uh, see if we can't get that next firstener. Now that may be a little hard to do because there's a like a bracket and a brake line in the way, but since these guys are all flexible, I think I can maneuver around this. I think. Let's see here. It's either gonna work or it's not. Yeah, it's working. You see that wrench flex? I was actually bending the wrench. Oh yeah. It's working. Not by hand it's not. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. It's coming off. We don't need that there. Got it? And then there's that one last one on the top. Maybe I can reach that through uh, through this wheel well as well. <laughs> wheel well as well. That's funny. Linguistical challenge. You gonna get on there? There's like <sighs> rust chunks preventing a good fitment here. Or oh, that's a 15 millimeter. It's probably a 15. Yeah. 
Who decided to do that? Better not be factory. Let's up this to a 15. Is it gonna fit? Oh yeah, like a glove. Okay, yep, it's coming out. Victory is near. Ow. I'll just punch the Nissan. Almost there. Come on. Fatigue. My energy fatigue is setting in. Uh oh. Where'd that flashlight go? I cannot see what I'm doing. Yeah. I probably should have just gotten that one with the extension from the back. Oh well. We're in the middle of the sunk cost fallacy now. I can't give up on what I've started. So we're just gonna see this one through. Are you gonna come off or what? Please? Got it, okay. That's all the fasteners. Everybody's removed. Let's, uh, let's go back down below. We'll pull this unit out and then we'll prep the new stuff to go back in. Okay. Nice and easy. Yeah, there's there's nothing in there. We can see through it. Not good. It's not EPA compliant. Not at all. Oh, compliant. I don't like that word. You must comply. Sounds like some Robocop stuff, doesn't it? Do what we say. Comply. All right, new converter, old converter. They appear to be similar in uh, dimensions and size. So uh, next up, I'm gonna transfer this O2 sensor over to this converter, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get these guys installed. Uh, we'll do them in sections. I'm not gonna assemble them. And then put them in. We'll put this one in, then we'll put the rear converter in, then we'll move back over to the other side and repeat said procedure. Yeah, this one's kind of stuck too. Threads are gritty. Come out. Hmm. Yeah, that's too bad. We were kind of hoping on getting a good core return out of these units and there's nothing in there to return. Converter click. Okay, we've got ourselves a bag of nuts and uh, looks like a gasket in there. So let's bust into this. What's this thing? This bag contains hardware that will be required for install. Do not throw away. Got it. Do not. I return. I had to go, hey! I'm fixing cars. What are you doing? I had to go and uh, find a trip breaker. We put a space heater in the office and it's overheating things. All right, let's see how this is gonna work out. We've got the, the gasket on. It's a crush gasket. Here's our cable. We'll set that aside on the frame rail. Okay units over the stud that's on top and reach in and get the, get these bolts started here. Sorry if I'm blocking your your view. The new bolt does not thread. What is this? Did they powder coat the threads or something silly? Happens all the time. I got it. It's kind of started. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's get that next bolt up there installed. So we're gonna go back uh, into the fender well. Moving around here. 
And while we're here, I'll, I'll reuse that stud that's already in place. And we'll uh, just put one of the older bolts back on it, or the, the nuts, rather. There we go. Let's see if I can maneuver this in here. Uh, you guys can't see anything. Sorry. I got, I got the washer on and I've got the, I chose the 15 millimeter size nuts as opposed to the, the 14s. There we go, that one's on. Here, I have an idea. We'll use the little mini ratcheting crow's foot deals and we'll run that nut down. It's gonna be a little faster than the big cumbersome ratchet or a big cumbersome ratcheting wrench. Come on, please. I'm just taking up the threads right now and then it should bottom out soon and start to walk that converter up into position. Since the top bolt is the hardest to get to, I wanna get that one tight first. And then uh, as I do the bottom bolts, it'll draw everything in and uh, secure the unit flush with the, the manifold. That's my thought process anyway. Come on, hurry up. I can see that converter drawing in closer. Thread that in a little bit better. That one wasn't exactly uh, in all the way when we started. Wiggle it some. All right, here, let's get this one, uh, let's get this little guy torqued a little bit here. Uh, after that, we'll plug in that O2 sensor and then we're done on this top section of this converter. This is awkward and cumbersome. I don't want to spend any more time up here than I have to. Kick. Now, let's see if I can manage to get this connector connected from a position where I can't see it. Nah, you know what, I'm doing that from up top. I can't. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna stress myself out trying to do that connector. Nope. Yeah, let's try to use the electric ratchet to run down those other two fasteners up there. It seems I can squeeze this guy in. Yeah. Did you see how it drew the flange in? That just compressed that little uh, donut gasket that was in there and deformed it, thus creating a seal. Can I reach that one? Not a chance. How about through here? Can I reach? Yep. That's cute. Couple turns with this 17 right here and that should be good and tight. Oh, foolishness, I went the wrong way. Did you guys see that? I don't function in the cold. Doesn't matter how much coffee I had, cold is cold. There we go. Clicks. We'll get that bottom fastener one more time too. Got to adjust the angle of our dangly bit up there a little bit. That's good. Okay, one installed. Three to go. Let's grab this next one here. We'll get the next front converter. And I, I know I said I was gonna do the rear converter next, but I looked over and saw the front one. Tool gravity kind of staring at me, so I wanna do the, uh, the other front one next. I changed my mind. I do that often. Okay, we have one more crush gasket. One bung hole. <laughs> that's that's a bung. This is the uh, it's filling the hole. It's a it's a bung hole. Um, let's go back and uh, let's get this guy installed next. All right, new converting unit coming in. Gasket still there. O2 sensors on it. Let's just fling this over here so I don't get it stuck. Slide that over the stud that's still in the manifold. And we'll run in uh, one of the bolts here. Come on now. 
All right, that one's going in. Uh, another ball, where's that other one? We got one more here. This one goes in at the top. Please thread, come on. Let's torque this top one first. Oh, hang on here, we're not reaching very well. Yeah, you cannot see. There. Okay, let's uh, swing around back to the back side here. And we'll get that uh, that top nut on. Oh, there we go. There's our washer. You gotta be careful those heat shields right here. Those are kind of sharp. You can get uh, you can get an extremity dug into it pretty quick and hurt yourself. And you know there's nothing like getting some crusty, rusted, lubricated injuries on a cold day. Ah, not what I wanted to do. Get back on there, wobbly bit. Stay. Very nice. Let's torque this one down. Kicks. And we'll go back in the front and grab those other two. Oh, camera gravity. I got you guys, don't worry. All right, time for some final torque here. A little bit on that one. Okay, that just drew in tight. Clicks. And a little bit more on that little guy up top here. All right, good to go. And again, I'll, I'll get this sensor connector uh, from the top side, I can't reach both connectors from down here. So moving back again, we have the classic orange high temp silicone sealant on an exhaust. That's awesome. You never know what you're gonna find. Get rid of that. And this looks like, uh, what do they call that? Like exhaust cement or sealant or something? Yeah, who knows, it could be caulk for a window. All right, so new new pipe is coming in. It gets another donut gasket. We're gonna run this guy back forward and it's gonna meet the, uh, the converter that we just installed. This is the secondary converter. It's the post converting converter. Because one's not good enough, so let's install four. Four pollution filters. Did you know our country has some of the worst quality fuels on the planet? That's what I, uh, that's what I read. Now, I know that, like, for example, if I put junk gas in my lawnmower, it, uh, it smokes like a freight train, runs terrible. It uses fuel uh, much quicker than uh, a good tank of fuel would use. Than it would with a good tank of fuel. There we go. And I just can't help but wonder if we could reduce our, uh, our emissions issues if we did something like uh, up the quality of our fuel because whoa gravity that's a that's bolt gravity because by my experience poor fuel causes you to have to use more of it and it pollutes more because it makes smoke and all kinds of other stuff so I'm wondering if we just maybe got better fuel we wouldn't have to be so crazy with these emissions products but you know, it, I mean, just a thought. I'm no, I'm no like chemical engineer or EPA agent or anything. So it's, it's, I'm kind of out of my wheelhouse on this one. But uh, just a just a fleeting thought. Perhaps we could reduce emissions if we just uh, utilized a higher tier of fuel, and then we wouldn't have to bolt all this uh, extra stuff on our cars. Just thought. All right, moving back some, let's go ahead and uh, get this rear O2 installed. 
Watch this, I'll uh, spin it a little bit backwards to twist up that wire. And then when I thread it, it will untwist the wire and it will be straight. That's how I get away with uh, changing that without uh, twisting it up or disconnecting it. Clever, no? Click. Okie dokes, last but not least, on the uh, rear flange over here, We've got two more bolts to go. Um, I don't have this MLS steel gasket, the one with the red silicone all over it, but I can reuse the one that's already here, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's the cool thing about multi-layer steel, is in, oh, unless it blew out all the way, uh, we can reuse this. Now we're, uh, we're slightly misaligned here, so I'm just gonna kind of pry bar this converter over until those, the bolt meets the hole here. Yep, got it. Thread it some. Rust. Ooh, it's almost all the way through. They totally powder coated these threads. It's gotta be that. Whatever. There's another bolt. I lost one. Oh, it's in my pocket. It's a good place to not lose it. Put our silicone gasket back and pry this one more time. Maybe. Gotta get the bottom in and it's not uh, it's not being compliant. That's ironic. Come on. I feel it. That's it. Yeah, it goes in almost all the way. No turning back now, send it. Click. Yeah, those, uh, those bolts do not appreciate this flange. It's either a very crappy flange or uh, not the right size bolt or at least the right pitch, but they they did, they went in, so we're, we're good with that. All right, guys, that's three down, one to go. We're in the home stretch. New gaskets on this one. Let's get her fed up into position here and get everybody made it up, bolted together. Uh-oh. We have conflict of fitment. There we go, got it. We're good, we're good there. Let's see. Get that one threaded. I tried to, I test ran uh, this bolt in before we came over here and it goes in, but it's still a little gritty. It's gritty just like the other side was, but I don't think it's a, a pitch problem. I just think there's like powder cut, powder coat, new words inside of the threads. See, they run in, it goes. But they're just really rough. Must be a manufacturing kind of thing. Well, there's one. Let's get that other one started. There, now we can see. This is going to smell so bad when we start it and it heats up. There's all this paint and powder coat, stickers, and tape. There's all kinds of stuff here. And when it all heats up, it's going to burn off and make a bunch of smoke and stuff like that. dead battery yep no worries got auxiliary electrons we'll finish it off with the, the wrench you see it kind of boogered those threads up but not really it just it's got to be a different pitch Hi, Daddy. hey yeah I think the pitch wasn't right maybe one's metric and one's standard which is silly because these are the bolts that came with it. Oh well. 2022 strikes again. There we go. Okay, that's tight. All right, looking left a little bit, we can uh, see our sensor. We'll get this guy installed real quick, like twist it up, line it up, 
thread it up on twist. What are you stuck to? Mm. Why? Yeah, it's this power coat. It's got to be the power coat. Perhaps they have low power coating standards in the country of origin. Well, considering that nothing in this car plays nice, I'll just force this like I did it. Did all the rest of it. Oh, there we go. Got past that powder coating error. That blob of whatever that was in there. Ah. Clicks and bangs and loud noises. Wouldn't be so bad if this car wasn't in the way. This would be easy to do. Yeah, probably could have uh, unplugged it and did it on the ground, but but I didn't. So so here we are doing it the clicky way. One more. There we go. Good to go. All right, one more flange back here, and we're all set. Except for that misfire, I am going to look into that misfire. Remember that P0302 code? I am going to look into that. Uh, I think that they thought that this and this and these other two were going to fix the misfire, and that's that's just not the case. I called them and told them. All right, let's maneuver in our little red multi-layer steel gasket here. And get these last two fasteners fastened. And then, uh, then we'll go back up top and see what's up with that misfire. I'm going to bet that it's a coil, that's what I think. It's probably a coil. Uh-oh. Pry bar everything. Please? Maybe if I pry bar the converter that way, will that work? No. It's so close, too. Here, I know. We'll get the, the gasket and the bolt lined up. That didn't work. I have an idea. Watch this. We'll just wiggle it until it goes. Yeah, there it goes. I got it. Thread's caught. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's one. That one's in all the way. Let's line the gasket up and we'll get uh, get number two in place. And of course, I'm not gonna forget this little ground wire strap thing that's hanging out here. I don't know why the exhaust needs to be grounded, but whatever. I'll put it back. Uh -huh. Please line up. Uh-oh, the youngins are upset. Probably fighting over a chair. Or something that we have multiple of the identical item of, like a cup. Okay, that's our final flange. Clicks. Good to go. Let's let this thing down, plug in the upstream O2s, restock the engine, then we'll go and diagnose that misfire. Okay, we got this thing down on the ground. I, I propped the hood up a little bit more so I could reach the connectors back there. Uh, I got uh, both of the upstream O2s connected. Let's go ahead and get this thing restarted and uh, let's see what we can't do about uh, figuring out that misfire business. What the? Uh, what is this? What is this? Hang on. Give me light. There we go. Oh, I get it. I got it. We got a, uh, a little probe here. It's Pierce probing one of the wires for the fan. What's that about? Hang on. Oh, sweet. It's a test lead kit. And this looks like it's a out of a power probe kit. 
Hang on, this doesn't need to be here. Yeah, check it out, it's got a little needle that comes out. And that little needle will pierce the wire. Hang on. It's in there. It pierces the wire. And then you can uh, tap into a circuit with just this little device here. Yeah, power probe. Mm. Mine, this is mine now. Those are the rules. If you leave it under the hood, someone else finds it, they own it. So what do you guys think about that? Is that acceptable to uh, keep lost and found tools? I think it is. Let's, uh... Moment of truth, starting the engine. Let's head inside and check out our scan tool. See what's up with those misfires. We, we need to lose that cylinder two misfire. Oh, I feel it right now. Here, let's go, let's get into data. I don't know if this Nissan's gonna give me live misfire data or not. It, it, it might. But no, uh, in all seriousness, with that, uh, those little probes over there, uh, I think those are the fellows next door. Is he, uh, he's been doing some work on this car, so I'm gonna go see if that's his before I decide to steal it. But if it's not his or nobody else's, it's mine. Those are the rules. Tools left under hood belong to the finder. Unless it's from your store, like your shop. If that's your buddy's tools or the guy next to you, you, you give it back. You don't ever don't ever take tools that you know who owns them. That's not okay. But if they're if they're located in the wild, that's fair game. Mm, yeah, I don't think I've got misfire counts. May have to do this the uh, the manual analog way, and that will be uh, unplugging ignition coils. Now the P0302 says that's cylinder number two. That's the problem. Uh, that is this coil right here. Let's disconnect it. See what it does. All right, it is firing. Let's just go ahead and pull it out. Come out of there. Thank you. I'm starting to see all the smoke coming up from the coating and the grease and whatever else that was on that exhaust. Okay, let's see what we've got here. through the boot. There's even a burn mark right there with the spark is escaping. See that? It's supposed to be firing through the bottom of it because that's where the spark plug meets the coil. But that uh, insulator is damaged. Oh, it's gonna blow. That's not good. All right, so we've established that this coil right here is uh, definitely failing because it is leaking spark to its boot. But when I have this thing removed, I still think I can hear some clicking somewhere else. And I'm suspecting that maybe even that other coil right there, or perhaps, uh, perhaps the one in the back on this bank is also leaking. So let's, uh, let's pull each one of these out. And uh, we'll see. Keep this one's also firing through its insulator. And the survey says, sure is. Look at that one. That one's firing through its insulator. That's two failed coil boots. Let's check this last one here. Now it has one new coil back on, uh, on the rear of the other side cylinder head. Let's check this guy. Yeah. Firing through the boot, look at that. I'm gonna recommend we replace the, uh, the five remaining coils that have not been changed yet. Alrighty, well, we figured out what the deal is with the misfires. 
uh, but that uh, is going to require additional authorization. So I'm just going to go ahead and click these things back together for right now. I'm going to let everybody know uh, what we found with the, the shaking business. And uh, we, may, uh, we may do additional work to this truck, we may not. Again, the task was to just uh, throw those converters in there. So uh, that being said, uh, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out because we are all done here. Uh, as always, like thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Power down. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If uh, you did not enjoy this video, then let me know about that in the comment section also down below. Constructively, be nice. So again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Dotson.